welcome back to Cody's Lab. So as you might know, I've been obsessed with charcoal for some time now. Recently, I have been particularly interested in what it does to the soil. As a result, I've watched all kinds of biochar videos and done all sorts of research. But something I have not seen is the effect of the different particle sizes on plant growth. Is it better to have large chunks or do I want to grind it into a fine powder? I don't know. So, in this video, I'm going to attempt to find out. So the first task is to acquire a soil sample. This is from Chicken Hole Base, a location where in the future I may be burying many tons of charcoal. Once I had acquired my soil sample, the first step was to run it through a classifier screen to remove any large stones and to completely mix it together, making it homogenous. So now for the char. I could of course take charcoal and add it to the soil, but charcoal itself isn't very good for plants. It actually pulls the nutrients and bacteria out of the soil, depleting it and decreasing plant growth. But I want something that increases plant growth. So I need to preload it with bacteria and nutrients so that it's not taking it from the soil, but rather adding it to it. Now that process of putting nutrients and bacteria into the charcoal to make it into biochar takes several months at a minimum. Fortunately, I have some that's ready to go in my fish filter. I made and filled this filter with charcoal about a year ago. Since then, it has had the waste from three large goldfish run through it. I figure it's about time to replace the filter, so this is a good use for the material. First, I removed the top layer of biochar that had moss, some other plants, and springtails living in it. I ended up replacing that on top of the new charcoal when I refilled the filter. And then it was just a matter of classifying the char down to the different particle sizes. I started with a half inch screen and anything that couldn't go through that was plus one half. The next screen was a quarter inch screen, so anything that couldn't go through that was plus a quarter. And so on. Since the biochar was wet and I couldn't let it dry out, otherwise the bacteria could die, it was fairly sticky and I had to wash the particles apart using water. This means that in order to have the same mass of carbon in each of my samples, I needed to first put it in a vacuum chamber to remove air bubbles, and then weigh the sample underwater. This was tricky. I had to put what I thought was about the right amount of charcoal in the beaker, fill the beaker to the same level, and if the weight was off, I had to add or remove charcoal, add or remove water to fill it to that level, and then weigh it again. Eventually I had the same amount of each of the char samples loaded up into their own labeled yogurt cups. I took each sample of char out of the yogurt cup, poked some holes in the bottom, added in some sand for drainage, and then I mixed the char with a measured amount of soil before adding it back into the cup. Budcat, of course, supervised the whole process. I ended up making nine pots in total. Seven of the char samples, one control that had nothing else, just a little bit of extra dirt, and I also did one pot containing perlite, the same volume of perlite as charcoal. Uh, perlite is a material you commonly find in uh, potting soils to make them lighter, make the roots of the plant able to penetrate more easily. I figure since perlite and charcoal are both mostly void space, they may have a similar effect which is why I'm testing it. For the test plant, I'm using grass, and I weighed out one gram of grass seed for each pot. To plant the grass seed, I just sprinkled it across the top of the container and then lightly pushed it into the soil mixture using my fingers. Since I was leaving for several days and I didn't want the grass to dry out during its most vulnerable stage, I did also add a small amount a very fine mulch. Once I got back from my trip, most of the grass had already germinated and was growing up out of the pots. I moved them from inside the house to outside where they could get more sunlight. I gave them all the same amount of water and every time I watered them I randomly shuffled the pots so they didn't have any effect due to their location. I also fertilized the grass a few times using some soluble plant fertilizer. I didn't really measure the amount of fertilizer, I just give them kind of what I thought they needed, and of course the same amount for each pot. I didn't really want the grass to be snowed upon, so when the forecast called for it, I brought the grass back inside the house. 
It was at this time that Bud Cat decided that they needed a taste test. He didn't exactly take the same amount of grass from each pot, so I decided it was best to move the grass to an area where he couldn't get it, in this case underneath some grow lights, and I also cut the grass all to the same height so it could start back over from the same point to eliminate any effects that uh, he may have had on it. I think this is better anyway, because now the grass has got its roots down into the pot more. Once the grass grew back to approximately six inches in height and another video project uh, didn't work out and I needed something to film, figured it was time to harvest the grass. Looking at them, it was fairly obvious that the perlite and the control grew significantly less than all of the charcoal samples. But of course, to get actual numbers, I cut the grass again and put it on a scale. To weigh it out far more accurately than my eyes ever could. And of course, I was careful to cut all of the grass to the same height and weigh all of the pieces. Once I had the data, I was able to give the grass to Bud Cat, who thoroughly enjoyed it. And I typed the data into Excel in order to analyze it. As you can see, the perlite and the control did about the same, with the perlite actually being slightly worse. And all of the biochar samples did between 17 and 32% better. Graphing the data gives me what appears to be a downward trend, as the smaller the particle size, the worse the grass did which is completely backwards from what I was expecting. But the strong dip for the plus eighth inch char does give me a hint as to what might be going on here. You see, when I was washing the charcoal, I was using water straight out of the hose. The city water is, of course, slightly chlorinated. The larger pieces, I just kind of rinsed them off real quick, plus their large size means that most of the charcoal is unaffected. But the eighth inch in particular, I washed for a long time using the hose until the bucket I was using to rinse it into was completely full, at which point I threw the hose aside and I reused the wash water. This means the eighth inch char got exposed to more chlorine than any of the others did. So it's entirely possible that the biochar particle size does not matter and all I'm seeing here is chlorine exposure. A piece of evidence that maybe supports this chlorine hypothesis is the fact that I took an equal portion of each of these six char fractions and I recombined them to make the mixed char sample. And indeed, when I take an average of the growth of the grass on those six fractions, I end up with a number very close to the amount of growth I saw on the mixed char sample. So this tells me that the numbers we're seeing here is actually something to do with the char and not some sort of mistake or statistical fluke. Like the, the 1 8 char was actually inhibited somehow. And the only thing I can think of is the chlorine in the water, which I didn't think of at the time. So my plan is to continue this experiment, continue watching the grass. Presumably over time the bacteria should recolonize the charcoal and that effect should disappear. I put the pots back underneath the grow light and you can see them here 24 hours later. Grass grows fairly quickly after it's been cut. So in say five or six months I should have a lot more data and we'll be able to produce an update video. While I'm at it, I may as well also redo the experiment entirely from scratch, uh, fixing all the problems I've run into. Uh, one, I really need a larger sample size. Uh, I've got an N of 1 right now. I'd like to bring that up to like an N of 5 at least. Also, I want a larger volume on each pot, so I'm going to use buckets. I, it's going to be a lot of buckets, but I think I've got enough uh, from the other experiments I've done. Just you know, rinse the buckets out, drill holes in the bottom, should be good. And definitely do not use chlorinated water. That was so dumb, but I didn't know that it would do it. It just, now I, now I know the bacteria in the charcoal is very delicate. And perhaps you guys also know that when you're watering your garden, maybe the chlorine's doing something you don't know it's doing. <laughs> so no chlorine. 
And this time I'm going to crush screen and weigh the charcoal while it's still dry. That'll make things a lot easier. And I'll just uh, mix it with like powdered cow dung or something to inoculate it in place so I don't have to mess around with it while it's wet. As I mentioned before, it does take a long time to do it that way, but we're coming into winter now, so I've got a few months to let them sit and inoculate the charcoal. Uh, next spring I can plant the grass or whatever plant that we decide to put in the buckets. Maybe we can do different plants for each one. You know. And perhaps by next summer we'll have some numbers. I, I know that's a long time to wait, but you know, the science takes a while. If you have any other suggestions, I'd love to hear about them down in the comments. And, you know, I'm excited for this. Uh, this is information that we really need to know, especially since I'm planning on building a machine to produce vast quantities of charcoal uh, for putting in the ground because I want the plants to grow better. But I also want to sequester the carbon. And this is one idea that I think is really good. If it does turn out that the size doesn't matter, great, I don't have that constriction. But if the size does matter, then, then I can plan for it. You know, I can make the very best material. <laughs> Alright, so we'll see you guys in about five or six months. Of course, I'll have other videos before then, hopefully. <laughs> so, hope you enjoyed. I'll see you next time. The cat really likes grass. Watch you, bud. Yeah.